Rotted Reviews, and today I'm here with something very, very different. You see, I know that this channel is devoted pretty strictly to horror movie reviews, and every once in a while I'll branch out with something slightly different, but still relegated to the world of horror. I kind of want to mix things up just a little bit and every once in a blue moon and talk about films other than horror. I've actually gotten some feedback from some subscribers and even some patrons saying that they would welcome and encourage this format. So uh, my primary focus is going to be on horror, but every once in a while I will be discussing other movies. And when I do that, just to easily differentiate things, I'm going to be changing the background color of my thumbnails to blue. And this video is something that is incredibly near and dear to my heart. This is a highlight of an actor that I consider to be one of my favorites of all time, and additionally, one of the biggest influences in my life as a cinema lover. I'm talking about John Turturro. Born on this day, February 28th in 1957, happy birthday, John, in Brooklyn, New York, he has a career spanning all manner of genres, working with some of the most acclaimed directors out there. From a frequent occurrence in Coen Brothers films and Spike Lee films, he was a powerhouse in Miller's Crossing. Look at your heart! I'm praying to you. Look in your heart. He had a great performance as the lead role in Barton Fink. He's been in Do the Right Thing. And you might know him as the seventh billing down in the credits list of various blockbusters, such as the Transformers films and a variety of Adam Sandler movies. In my opinion, he adds a quiet dignity and grace to the dramatic roles, as well as not being afraid to let his hair down for some of the more sillier slapstick moments. And while I can talk endlessly about his bigger roles, such as in the Coen Brothers movies and such, I kind of wanted to take a look at some of his lesser known, quieter features and highlight five movies that I consider to be hidden gems of John Turturro. And so in no particular order of quality or chronology, I'm going to start with the 2003 movie of The Truce. The last directorial film of Francesco Rosi, John Turturro plays Primo Levi in this true story of this Italian Jewish chemist and author and his liberation from captivity in Auschwitz. With the Nazis gone and running for their lives and the Russian soldiers bringing down the gates, he has a newfound freedom, but his journey is far from over. This movie tells the story of how he trekked and traveled by foot and by train through various countries, including Poland, Russia, Romania, Hungary, Austria, and Germany, trying to get to his home in Turin, Italy. Also telling the story of during the journey, the people that he encounters, the hardships that he has to overcome, including basic hunger. And while a lot of World War II movies slam home in an emotional journey with a sledgehammer, and honestly, rightly so, this actually takes a more quiet and dignified approach while still having a very big emotional gravitas to it. In my opinion, John really nailed his performance as Primo as a quiet and dignified observer of people and situations as he's making his way home. The Truce is a slow and thoughtful movie that, with the powerful performances and what the characters go through, still manages to punch me in the gut every time I watch it. Up next, the 1992 movie... Brain donors. So there's a reason that I included this one. Out of John Turturro's entire catalog, why this movie? Well, it comes down to nostalgia. You see, I watched this when it first came out, or at least when it hit the VHS rental uh, you know, shelf, and my father rented it, and I loved it. I watched it so many times, and it's an interesting thing because not only did I watch it, but I completely forgot, or at least never really acknowledged, who actually starred in it. It wasn't until much later in my life that I found John Turturro and I gained my cinematic appreciation and then later still that I went back and revisited Brain Donors that all of a sudden it hit me with a wallop. Holy shit, my favorite actor is the lead role in this movie that has such nostalgia in my life. Directed by Dennis Dugan, who is known for his slapsticky comedies, including Adam Sandler films such as Happy Gilmore, this movie is doomed to failure from the start. And I don't necessarily mean failure in terms of eliciting laughs or being a box office hit. What I mean by failure is that this is a 1992 retelling of the Marx Brothers classic, A Night at the Opera. And I think that it is doomed to failure right from the start, no matter who it is, no matter who's directing it, you're not going to be able to compete with the Marx Brothers in any way, shape, or form. But even so, I did find this to be a very funny movie that 
eh, only about 50% of the jokes actually work, but they're so rapid fire and so plentiful in their attempts that uh, that's still a pretty good number. And in this movie, John Turturro plays Roland T. Flackvisor, the Groucho Marx S character, who is the fast-talking, smooth-talking, ambulance-chasing lawyer as he starts to become involved with this ballet production put on by a rich heiress, and alongside him are two cohorts that he hires along the way, and together they try to milk this heiress for as much as she's worth while putting in as little effort as possible. When I do that, I'm the director of the ballet, and gentlemen, that spells cash with a capital Okay, you should go back to school. I hated teaching. And along the way, their greed turns into altruism as they run into two young lovers that are just trying to break their way into the ballet world, and can they use their newfound clout to bring them up into stardom status. And again, while acknowledging that nobody on earth could hold a candle to Groucho Marx and his performances, John Turturro actually manages to turn in a pretty decent performance as Roland Flackvisor. I thought you were cardiologists. Oh, well, they're all connected. We enter the rectum and head north. Why do you think we have such long instruments? With hitting one joke after another in rapid-fire succession, he really shows his comedy chops in this film. And yes, some of the written punchlines do go on way too long so that by the time they hit, they're just completely flat, as well as also being incredibly dated. This movie does not hold up to modern times terribly well. This has a very late 80s, early 90s comedic feel with all sorts of getting as much money as possible, greed, gimme, 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 buxom, bikini-clad babes, and so forth, and that kind of level of humor. But even so, and I fully acknowledge that this may be with rose-colored glasses, I still consider this to be a fantastic early 90s comedy that is absolutely worth watching. At number three, the 2009 movie Rehearsal for a Sicilian Tragedy, directed by Roman Paskoff. This is a film in which John Turturro actually plays himself. It's not a fictional narrative, it's more documentary style, as he's going back to his ancestral home in Sicily to try and find material for another movie down the road. There's an old theater model deeply embedded in Sicilian culture of puppetry, marionette puppetry, that is very distinct to Sicily in some of the movements and some of the themes of it, very based in medieval stories of somewhat true with a highly fictional narrative kind of grand telling operatic storylines. This puppet theater still exists today and he wants to find out if maybe that there's a movie hidden embedded in this somewhere about a puppeteer, something along those lines. So he goes there for inspiration and while he's there, he goes and visits the people of Sicily. Now I have to admit that after watching this, John Turturro is not the most well-polished travel vlogger out there. Anthony Bourdain, may he rest his soul, he is not. However, it's good to see him just be himself in a very honest and vulnerable state as he's browsing through his ancestral territories. We watch him knock on the door of his grandmother's house and then tell the heartbreaking tale of his ancestors and how he got to where he is in his life. For a man that appears to so effortlessly slip on the shoes of fictional strangers, it's good to have a movie where we can just see him be himself. And if you're a John Turturro fan like I am, I do recommend this for that reason. Number four, the 1999 movie Cradle Will Rock. This is a little bit of a cheat for me because, uh, well, John Turturro is not the lead performance, but I maintain that there is no lead performance in this movie. It's an ensemble cast with powerhouse performances equally spread across the entire divide. And there's only one thing that really astounds me more than how much I love this movie, and that's how few people have ever heard of it, especially considering the cavalcade of names that star in it. This was a movie that was written and directed by Tim Robbins, and it stars Hank Azaria, John Cusack, Joan Cusack, Carrie Elwes, Emily Watson, Susan Sarandon, Bill Murray, Jack Black, Kyle Gass. The list goes on. Paul Giamatti. It just goes on and on. And of course, John Turturro. And this movie showcases how in the 1930s, politics and art collide. We have the story of Rockefeller and how Diego Rivera put his mural up and his relationship with Frida Kahlo. We have the Federal Theater Project, which was designed to keep actors, actresses, and stagehands employed during economic strife, and how that butted heads with the federal money they were getting, considering that some of the plays, including this one in this movie, put on by Orson Welles, was butting heads by having a pro-union agenda. And then we have the absolutely heartbreaking tale, which considering the cast doesn't sound like it should be, but it absolutely did rip my soul out of Bill Murray as a ventriloquist 
as he's taking under his wing Jack Black and Kyle Gass to show them how to be performers at the same time being accused of being a red sympathizer by the House on american Activities Committee. And John Turturro in this movie plays Aldo Savano, who is a struggling family man who is cast as the lead in this play put on by Orson Welles that I mentioned before was butting heads with the Federal Theater Project. And again, John Turturro manages to deliver a fantastic performance in a smaller role than the other four films in this video, but still standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with his peers and his brethren as he's part of this ensemble just as much as the next person in Hammer's Home, a final emotional moment. And the last movie in this video is my personal favorite, the 1996 film Box of Moonlight, directed by Tom DeSillo. And in this movie, John Turturro plays Al Fountain, a man that is working away from his wife and child, uh, supervising a construction site and working alongside the workers there. He is a man that is a bit notorious among his peers on the job site because he is an absolute beast of a clock watcher. The name of the game for Al is efficiency, and that puts him a bit at odds with some of his co-workers. He's not invited to poker when they all get back to the motel after a long day, things like that. And when the job is all wrapped up and concluded, or at the very least he's told that they can all go home, he finds himself a gray hair. And in doing so, he also starts seeing some events backwards. He'll be sitting at a restaurant and all of a sudden he'll notice that somebody's water is pouring from their cup into the waitress's pitcher. He'll be traveling by bus and he'll notice a bicycle riding backwards, things like that. It's just a little bit of a quirk as age is starting to catch up with him. He's a man that has been tapping the clock so intently that he has missed the fact that life is starting to pass him by. So he takes the moment when the job is all wrapped up that instead of traveling along with his companions to head straight back home, he decides to go ahead and take a little bit of a sightseeing tour of the area. He remembers this lake that he visited when he was a child that had a big slide in the middle of it, things like that. He wants to go and revisit them. And in doing so, he actually finds himself stumbling across some misadventures when he runs into the kid. Played by Sam Rockwell, the kid is basically everything that Al is not. He is carefree, he is juvenile, he lives off the grid by basically tapping into other people's power lines in a half trailer that has couches strewn about everywhere. He just lives the life that he wants to with no thoughts to any sort of consequences whatsoever. And the entirety of the movie revolves around the relationship between these two characters as they butt heads but also learn from one another in terms of what it means to live one's life as well as possible. I often call this the coming of age film for the midlife crisis. I just love the characters of both Al Fountain and the kid and how well they play with one another as well as some great supporting roles by performers such as Katherine Keener. This is a charmer of a movie that honestly resonates with me more and more as I get older and I heartily recommend it. So there we go, five hidden gems of John Turturro and on the one in a million shot that he's ever going to watch this, thank you so much John for how you've impacted my life as a lover of cinema. I can't possibly overstate how much your collective works have meant to me. And so thank you to everybody out there that has watched this video. Remember next time you want to watch any movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.